Welcome dear learners. Today we are going to discuss about the circular economy. As we know, there are various kinds of pressures that the human race is facing nowadays and many more pressures will come into force in the future. So basically nowadays the human development is mostly dependent on the fossil fuels. Maybe it coal, petroleum or natural gas or industries, vehicles, household, commercial setup all runs on the fossil fuels. Maybe it is an LPG coal for power generation or fossil fuels for the vehicles or any kind of uh, power generation. So as we see earlier, there has been a sharp increase in the population and there is a sharp increase in the resource consumption also. There are some three scenarios where the population growth can be very high uh, due to some life expectancy rate of increase and there it should maybe a mild and then what kind of the graph it shows and then if the population growth is less then it will certainly decline. But in case of the population growth around we uh, in uh, humans on this earth are around 7 billion people. So we consume oil reserves, which are the non renewable resources. So which we consume at faster rates because of our development race. So we are consuming our oil, coal and other resources at extensive rate at unsustainable rate. So without taking in concentration the demand of the future generation. So this uh, leads to I mean, what was I saying, the population explosion or population growth. In coming years, it will lead to a more demand of the food, that is 70% more food is required to feed the population monsters and there will be more uh, energy demand like 45% and more water demand. All these resources are except food resources that can be generated. but food resources are also less because uh, we don't have such uh, amount of land as uh, the population is growing. So the land uh, is also less. So <coughs> we should go for the extensive kind of agriculture activities. So in this lecture, we will be mainly focusing on our economy. What kind of economy is uh, we should uh, be focused on so that our lives, our country, our principalities will be the sustainable kind of thing. So here the origin of circular economy. Circular economy is uh, grounded in a study of feedback in which uh, like the rich uh, non-linear systems, particularly living systems. So the circular economy is a form of production and consumption that goes beyond the traditional. So the traditionally we have three R's that is reduce, reuse and recycle. So this kind of economy goes beyond that three R's and adds uh, in its model the sharing, renting, repairing and renewing of products and their materials as many times as necessary. In an attempt to convert a linear economy that has devastated ecosystems and environment over the years to its limit. So the uh, what kind of economy right now we have that is the linear economy where the various products are generated but at the end they go into the waste dumps and products. So uh, in earlier lecture uh, in the solid waste management, I was discussing how can we uh, reduce the solid waste generation and then how can we recycle or reuse them. But this kind of economy is beyond. Every product is a initial point where we can use that product in somewhere else. So the 
product goes on in circular form, not in the linear form. So a major outcome of uh, this notion of optimizing system rather than components of notion of uh, design for fit. So as a generic notion, it draws a uh, from a number or more specific approach, including cradle to cradle or biomimicry, industrial ecology, sharing, collaboration, economy, and the below economy. So the, um, right now there are various concepts like below, below carbon, below water, below economy, biohydrogen. There are many kinds of concepts by which our economy can be a circular economy. So more fre most frequently described as a framework that is the circular economy of for thinking its supporters claim it as a coherent model that has value as part of response to the end of the era of cheap oil and materials so when we go for the circular economy here is the diagram in which uh, there is an example of the linear economy in which we take uh, certain kind of minerals oils from the natural resources maybe is it is from the forest from water or land and we make certain kind of products maybe we make the uh, certain vehicles houses or certain kind of products like the smartphones or electronic gadgets then when at the end of that uh, smartphone we dispose of it uh, into the environment and that creates a havoc that creates a problem in the environment but here comes the play of the circular economy when we make a certain kind of things maybe it from the natural resources or existing wastes so we construct a new kind of material then we use this and we recycle the same so nowadays there are certain kind of uh, offers that are coming from the mobile companies or laptop companies they refurbish the things they ask the old kind of gadgets from you and they refurbish and they sell that back that is a kind of one of the model of the circular economy and the circular economy takes into account all the processes involved in the production uh, of a product from manufacturing to choice of packaging material and has three main objectives that is to eliminate waste and pollution to keep products uh, and materials in use and to regenerate the natural systems so this model of economy is based on renewable energies and materials and seeks to optimize the power of digital technologies to the maximum so here uh, there are certain uh, concepts like the bioeconomy that we'll be discussing uh, separately in some other lecture and here is a circular economy when we merge the bioeconomy with the circular economy it creates circular bioeconomy where all the natural uh, resources or the wastes that can be used to produce the clean energy so the circular bioeconomy is a sustainable economy based on the renewable energies so in circular economy we may be using the non-renewable resources but in the circular bioeconomy we mainly focus on the biological or renewable resources so what are the principles of the circular economy first is design out waste so we have to design such a model in which nothing is waste and second is understand that everything with the economy has a value some kind of uh, the products that is wasted uh, at the end of their use is not a waste it is a product for the next stage it is a it is a it is a material for the next stage in the circular economy design with disassembly uh, disassembly and uh, the reuse in mind with minimal changes required to reuse components of the product that is what I was saying uh, refurbishing the products differentiate between consumable and durable components like biological materials go back to the nature uh, by the decomposition process and durable or the technology material they can be used as long as they can be used uh, used or they can be recycled 
feedback or there can be some changes and find ways to reduce material across the value chain for uh, instance uh, like use of recycled plastic bottles into the polyester products so recently i have seen that uh, some uh, guy from the bangladesh has created uh, the biodegradable plastic uh, bags so when we use those so those kind of plastic bags we can go and decompose uh, that because it is a biodegradable and it can be also used as a fertilizer so such kind of products we should be uh, using in the bio eco circular bio economy eliminate toxic chemicals making it easier to reuse components without risk of contamination fuel the system with renewable so more focus in the future will be on the renewable resource of energy like solar wind geothermal biofuels and many other kind of fuels build the resilience through diversity and uh, resilience is basically uh, what kind of uh, possibility with the community is so that if we have faced certain kind of stresses or certain kind of shortage of products so if we have diversity in our system in our economy then certainly we are more resilient and resistant to any kind of stress or scarcity or uh, certain kind of shortage of materials adjust the prices to reflect the true cost of the effort required to the uh, produce of the product so um, what nature gives us is um, un uh, i mean unvaluable which we that price we didn't take in the account so uh, that price should be also reflected in such, such kind of products think in system making into account how one action will impact the whole so uh, it is kind of chain one action uh, has impact on other actions so that should be uh, made uh, clear or linked to each other so the various kinds of diverse that are uh, having with the circular economy is that the circular economy is a concept dated back more than 30 years so why it is getting attention or adoption now so basically it is a 30 year old concept of the circular economy and why it is getting such kind of attention now nowadays when we have the scarcity of the resources when there is an environmental pollution and to uh, handle all such kind of things this uh, concept was already there 30 years ago so the for businesses the key reason are practical depletion of uh, natural resources like i was saying uh, depletion of the water resources mineral resources forest resources and uh, rising the commodity prices uh, or commodity costs technological new tools making make circular principles easier to implement so <clears throat> this is one of the drivers why we should shift from the linear economy to the circular economy then great urbanization will also help to uh, enable implementation so uh, traditionally we uh, may not be such kind of i mean uh, focused more on the circular economy but when we go more to the urbanization then the implementation of the circular economy may be possible because uh, nowadays there is a concept of smart cities where the water consumption energy generation transportation is all kind of smart that is environmentally smart kind of thing so meanwhile more governments are getting behind the idea and the consumers are embracing the new ways of consuming like in china european union usa and also in india the ideas are coming uh, up for the circular economy so when whole of the economy circular economy will be more dependent on renewables so we should be having some knowledge about of renewable energies also so the renewable energy or bioenergy that is sustainable energy like the biomass sun that is solar energy wind energy tidal ocean energy thermal conversion hydro energy so here uh, the hydro energy is less sustainable or less uh, environmental friendly as compared to other energies so alternative energies that we are using right now that are in not infinite not infinite so in supply basically 
they have been generated millions of years um, under the various kinds of circumstances like the natural gas, natural gas uh, cogeneration, fuel cells, any kind of wastes, uh, waste energy that is generated or does not naturally replenish but emits very low uh, kind of emissions. So clean energy is energy which does not generate greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, chlorofluorocarbons. So our clean energy is of two types that is sustainable kind and the another one is non-infinite. So we can go alternatively what kind of uh, the energies we have to so the renewables are the solar, wind, hydro, bioenergy, thermal. So uh, biofuels basically here comes in to play the bioenergy, which will be the more focus in the circular economy. Uh, such uh, biofuels are liquid uh, gases or solid kind of material that are can be used for the industrial transportation, uh, basically for the generation of energy like the bioethanol, biodiesel, biochar. Uh, there are biohydrogen, there are n number of the fuels that are having in different states like liquid, gas or solid. So the bioliquids are the fuels for energy purpose uh, other than traffic that hold electricity, uh, including electricity, heat and cooling which can be produced from the biomass. So <clears throat> that we produce various kinds of liquids that can be used other than uh, the transportation services. The biomass is the only renewable resource that can be based on the bio-based chemicals as well. So the biofuels uh, are liquid or gases produced from the biomass. So biodiesel is one of the biofuel that is fatty acid methyl esters produced from the vegetable or animal uh, oils or fats or diesel fuel grade as biofuel. So uh, biodiesel can be also generated from the certain kind of plant seeds like jatropha and it can be also generated from the algae, microalgae after the trans esterification. So this can be used in the engines also uh, like the diesel engines after some modification basically for the transportation. And the bioethanol is a ethanol produced from biomass from the biodegradable waste fraction uh, as a biofuel that's like that can be used as a uh, fuel additive like uh, the 20% bioethanol and 80% of the petroleum that nowadays <clears throat> is used in the transportation. Biogas is basically the uh, anaerobic uh, digestion of the biomass by which the uh, gases like uh, biogas uh, which mainly consists of uh, methane and carbon dioxide this can be generated from the industrial municipal waste kitchen waste or farm wastes and it only not generates the biofuel but it also generates the kind of uh, slurry that can be used for the uh, as a fertilizer then biomethanol is also uh, produced from the biomass bio etbe that is ethyl tetra butyl uh, ether produced from the bioethanol uh, uh, for using for use it as a biofuel and uh, bio mtbe that is methyl tetra butyl ether so these are all uh, the biofuels that can be used in the transportation most of the biofuels are already uh, into the <clears throat> So the global biomass of energy that the biomass produced each year on our planet is approximately 172 billion tons of dry matter. So we have the huge amount of the uh, feed uh, feed uh, stock that is used for the biofuel generation, but it should not uh, be uh, uh, creating the problem with the agriculture also. With an energy content, this uh, is 10 times the energy consumed the world uh, wide at the same time. So at the same time, what kind of energy is used or consumed at the, in the world? <clears throat> this biomass has 10 times of uh, energy more than that. And this energy uh, potential remains largely untapped because we either uh, didn't use such kind of biomass in proper way 
uh, proper way and recent estimates suggested that only one seventh of global energy consumption is recovered by the biomass so this biomass is not totally used for the energy only one seventh of the energy consumption is derived from the biomass and mainly related to the traditional uses like firewood we use for uh, either heating purpose or for cooking purpose so what are the global scenarios of the renewable energies if we say uh, around 2010 uh, or 16 the more focus was on the coal energy but it is extrapolated that in um, future more focus will be the on renewable like solar wind and other renewable resource of energy and less will be uh, for the coal coal uh, will be i mean uh, the consumption will be uh, degrading reducing but uh, it seems that natural gas has the same role because it doesn't create so much of pollution so what are the advantages that uh, for the using of biomass for the energy production first it uh, prevents the greenhouse effect by uh, reducing the uh, carbon release or methane release to the atmosphere uh, avoidance of atmospheric sulfur dioxide produced by the combustion of the bio, uh, uh, fossil fuels mainly by the combustion of uh, the coal which is the main reason for the acid rain phenomenon then reduction of energy dependence uh, which results from the import of the fuel from the third uh, countries uh, with the corresponding saving in the foreign exchange uh, basically securing and employment and keeping the rural population in the border and other agriculture area contributing the biomass so when we are more focused on the biomass energy then we will uh, the other people will also come into play mainly the people which are from the rural community that can supply the biomass that is from the India is the then uh, India will be the key uh, country in the transformation of the energy uh, resources in the world because uh, Indian <clears throat> population is mainly dependent on mostly dependent on the farm then the farm residue production is very high so if there is an uh, kind of interventions by which certain industry they can convert this biomass into the energy then certainly they can uh, be uh, less dependent on the fossil fuels and the energy will become cheap and less polluting so but there are certain disadvantages also because it uh, biomass it a large volume uh, and high moisture content per unit of energy produced because the moisture content is the main problem and uh, difficulty of collecting processing transportation storage um, that is less uh, as compared to the fossil fuels then a most expensive uh, planet and equipment needed to utilize the biomass compute to the conventional energy resource because the technologies that are to be implemented or to be installed are much costlier than the technology that are used for using the conventional energy resources it is last distribution and the seasonal the biomass production is a seasonal kind of thing it is not supported by all seasons so and distribution is also not regular so this is also some kind of disadvantages so overall what are the barriers uh, for the development of circular economy in the india so lack of public awareness uh, on the environmental benefits that is one because when we go for the circular economy most of the people didn't know what is the circular economy then disorganized and costly supply chain of raw materials so in which uh, the raw materials that are the part of one step are should be streamlined so that it goes into the circular pattern so this kind of disorganization is there huge bureaucracy uh, that is a problem uh, low technical training around the biomass uh, or bioenergy Inst uh, instability of institutional and taxation uh, environment lack of substantial efforts to create a framework for the marketability of the green innovations so these are some kind of the barriers for installing or uh, using the circular economy
or in any kind of development developed countries so what are the various other challenges so first is the controlling life cycle efficiency so it is not surprise that many products are hard to disassemble or to recycle product designers are not waste managers basically and uh, have no strong reason to incorporate end of life consideration into their products the circular economy therefore requires integrating the entire product life a uh, cycle from the raw material extraction to the disposable like the preferably reusing or recycling this can only be done uh, uh, this can be done uh, either through the intensive collaboration between the uh, companies or single ownership of the product chain so another point is making the industries uh, resilient that is uh, sometimes the resource loop cannot be closed in one industry it is uh, possible to turn plastic bottles into plastic bottles into eternity as closed uh, loop shows but many industries will see that their waste being used as a resource by other industry that is a problem so linking up different products chain creating a web of complex interdependency so one industry will be dependent on, on other industry that can leave a system very vulnerable to the disruptions similar uh, complexity and uh, collapses are quite common in other systems so many uh, proponents of the circular economy set in nature as a example however nature is not perfect the huge complexity of the ecosystem means that change in the uh, variable say uh, the loss in biodiversity can create a cascade of the effect ending in the collapse of the entire system in the same way as cascade of events lead to the crash of the complex interlinking of financial systems which in turn affect the many other sectors also so the third reason or challenge is the keeping the environment on agenda so the conversation among all the participants at the resource events are clearly most about the economics of the circular economy the trillion pound opportunity in uh, transi uh, transitioning uh, to the circular economy uh, this was calculated by the allen mac arthur foundation uh were basically uh, uh however it would be silly to forget that resources use is strongly connected to the environment and social issues so there is a great potential for the reducing of environmental harm in applying the circularity concept and many opponents uh, proponents of the circul uh, circularity see it an important uh, argument in favor of Uh, the concept so <clears throat> what are the various kinds of advantages of the circular economy besides all the loopholes challenges there are some advantages also that is less extraction of virgin materials so there is less mm, consumption of the natural resources reduction in the consumption of fossil fuels naturally when the products go in the circular form so that there is less requirement of the fossil fuels extending the useful life of the product through action such as recycling it is enhancing decrease in the waste generation innovation and economic growth allowing for the change in consumption habits greater independence in terms of in uh, import and agility in uh, supply creation of jobs so when different sectors are independent to each other when various industries are independent to each other so there is also creation of jobs new kind of jobs like recycling jobs or supplying sorting transportation jobs so some kind of disadvantages are also there like lack of regulations or governing the legal competi competition among the companies lack of environmental awareness uh, on the part of suppliers on or clients and the economic barriers and access to the financing technical skills and ability that are not yet present in the work force 
presence of waste that is difficult to recycle and transform and last consumer acceptance problem so we should go for all like if we if we go uh, for the transformation from the circular uh, linear to circular economy then all these things should be kept in mind so this was very brief about the circular economy or circular bioeconomy that is mainly dependent on renewables so i hope all of you enjoy the lecture thank you